Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Pharmacology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you a patient care scenario, and your goal is to develop a treatment plan based primarily on pharmacological management. For an extra challenge, I'll be putting a one minute timer on the bottom of the screen. When the time is up, we'll do a scenario walkthrough, and I'll give you my treatment. Enjoy the card, and good luck. Three, two, one. Now that you've had a chance to go over the scenario, let's go ahead and take a look at it in closer detail. You're dispatched to a nursing home for a 72-year-old female patient. Upon arrival, the staff informs you that the patient has become less responsive over the last few hours. Your patient has an extensive medical history that includes dementia and a past CBA that left her with right-sided weakness and dysphagia. Staff reports that the patient's family visited yesterday and gave her sips of coffee despite warnings that she requires thickened liquids. Physical examination reveals cool, pale skin and rawls are heard in the right lower lung fields. Your partner obtains the following vital signs. Blood pressure 82 over 30, heart rate 127, respiratory rate 32, SpO2 88% on room air, temperature 96 degrees, end title 23, and a blood sugar of 108. There are no wounds or attached medical devices seen. So what's going on here? Well, this patient is actually fairly ill. The history of CVA or cerebrovascular accident or stroke left her with some deficits. The weakness is one thing, but in her case, she was also left dysphagic, as in unable to swallow without the potential of aspiration occurring. Aspiration is when food or liquid particles that are normally ingested into the esophagus are instead taken into the lungs. For these individuals, eating strategies are a little bit different. The use of thickened liquids give a more honey-like consistency to prevent aspiration from occurring is pretty standard. However, Swallowing while using a chin-to-the-chest technique also has shown to be just as effective. In the case of our patient, the family who was visiting ignored the warnings that she needed thickened liquids and instead proceeded to give her a cup of coffee. What occurred here is very likely this patient aspirated some of the coffee and in doing so probably introduced oral bacteria or flora into the otherwise sterile respiratory tree. So what we have going on is a combination of a chemical pneumonitis and an aspiration pneumonia. In either case, as the alveolar walls become irritated, leukocytes and other immune cells begin to flood the alveolar space, causing consolidations. These consolidations, of course, then interfere with airflow, making the patient hypoxic. If left untreated or unrecognized even for a short amount of time, this patient will become septic, and in her case, she did. We can tell sepsis is occurring because of a couple of different vital signs. The heart rate is greater than 100, the blood pressure is low, and in particular the MAP, the mean arterial pressure, is low. I didn't list it, but her mean arterial pressure is 47. Another vital sign that is useful in this context is the end tidal CO2. Low end tidal CO2s have a direct 
inverse correlation to high lactic acid levels, which are a classical marker of sepsis in the hospital. So even without the ability to analyze blood work, we can tell that this patient is septic based on a few of these vital signs. Now I know she's not febrile. Not all patients in sepsis have fevers, and it is important to remember that. So let's go ahead now and move on to the treatment. So just like with all my other cards, I'll begin treatment by regurgitating the mantra, Teen Safe, BSI, IVO2 Monitor. First, and most importantly, is to maintain and optimize ventilation and oxygenation. So high flow O2 here is paramount. I'll then begin administering IV fluids, and for sepsis patients, we will administer large boluses, up to a total of 30 mLs per kg of body weight. Make sure you do check lung sounds periodically. Make sure you are not fluid overloading this patient. Remember, we're shooting for a mean arterial pressure of at least 65. This pressure assures adequate end organ perfusion. So don't worry about getting the systolic blood pressure up over 100. All I need is to get that map to 65 or greater. You could also consider administering a nebulizer treatment for this patient, consisting of 2.5 milligrams of albuterol and 0.5 milligrams of ipratropium bromide. This may not necessarily help the patient, but it couldn't hurt. If aggressive fluid resuscitation fails to achieve a map of at least 65, We'll then move on to vasopressors. The vasopressor of choice in sepsis is norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is hung as an infusion and dosed at 0.05 to 2 micrograms per kilogram per minute. If you don't have access to norepinephrine, dopamine is the next choice. Dopamine is also hung as an infusion, but the dose here is 5 to 20 micrograms per kilogram per minute. If you don't have access to dopamine or norepinephrine, epinephrine can be hung as an infusion and this is hung at 0.01 to 2 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Now be aware, you can add multiple pressors on at once, but it's best to start with one and work your way up before adding a second one on. And just a little pro tip, if you require multiple pressors, consider titrating less preferable pressors like dopamine and epinephrine back and titrate up the more preferred vasopressor in this instance, norepinephrine. And last but not least, rapid transport. And that's it. If you like this video, please make sure to head over to my channel for more. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe and check out my other playlists, Static Cardiology, as well as Pro Tips and Paramedic Patho Fizz. Well, until I see you next time, keep washing your hands, stay safe, and have a good rest of your night.